Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting for September 3rd, 2019 at 7 p.m. Ms. Burner, good evening. Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. Hamey. Here. Ms. Hopkins. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. Thank you. And tonight we'll have the invocation by Vice Mayor Lindsay. Bow your head first with me, please. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this evening to ask for your grace and your presence upon this meeting and the people that are present in the audience. We ask you to put your hand upon our administration, our firefighters, our police officers, our military. And Father, we ask you especially to pay attention and, pay, and put peace to the victims of the recent shootings. Seems to be more and more every day, Lord. These things we ask in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. The pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> We'll need actions on the regular scheduled council meeting of 8 19 19. So moved. Yes. There was a couple mistakes in the minutes Mr. Lindsay had pointed out, and I, the official record is correct. Just so you guys know, I had to count wrong. Okay. I had you abstaining from everything, so <laughs> you weren't even here. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't here at the last meeting? No. He can't make the motion, then he wasn't here. Okay. Good point. Second it. We need, no, we need a motion. We'll give a motion. Yeah, I need the first motion. First motion. Ms. Hopkins? Second by Mr. Sorry. Cook. Okay. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Abstain. Was not present. Mayor Lowry? Yes. We weren't here. Yeah, you were here. Yeah, that's what I was like. You were here. Oh, the last. Oh. Sorry. I was like, maybe. I was thinking, I was thinking Thursday's here. right. Was uh, that would be a yes. <laughs> okay. I was like, man, what the Mayor I thought Lowry. he was sitting right next to me, but I was like, okay. I was maybe he wasn't. <laughs> Thursday, I was yes. Mr. Shammy. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Cook. Yes. And it's accepted. Thank you. Five one. Five zero one. Five zero one. All right, and communications tonight. We will be doing the swearing in of a newly appointed councilman, councilwoman, Peggy Eggleston. So, Peggy, if you would come up, and Miss Burner will swear you in. Let me get my paper here. Um, in this area here, whatever works best for Mr. Grimm. Right there. Feel like a fish out of water, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> the water's coming. <laughs> Make sure you put the right hand up now. Okay. Okay, so raise your hand. Say I and say you state your name. Do you hereby solemnly swear? That I shall support that I shall support the Constitution of the state of Ohio. And that I shall faithfully, I shall face faithfully, honestly, honestly, and impartially discharge, and impartially discharge the duties of member of council, <laughs> member of council for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, city of New Carlisle, Ohio, for the term ending December 31st, 2021, for the term ending December 31st, 2021, to which I have been appointed, to which I have been appointed. It's not as easy as it sounds, even though it's a little town. <laughs> See, this one blank. Here you go, Ms. Eggleston. Sign that. Congratulations. Thank you. And I can fill in there. Okay? Sign Yep. Thank you.
All right, again, congratulations, Miss Eggleston. You've been here enough. You might as well be up here. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> so, all right, moving on to the city manager's report. Mr. Bridge, good evening. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, members of the audience. I'd like to share with you the city manager report. Uh, this is the first meeting of the month. Our direct department directors are not in attendance, with the exception of our finance director, Ms. Watson, but they will not be giving reports this evening. Uh, under informational item, utility bills, <coughs> I, we have received a lot of complaints on how our utility bills are mailed out. The Coast Guard system seems not to be working for some people. So we are starting to look at outsourcing that. Uh, to where you'll get an actual bill in the mail enveloped, um, a lot more um, discreet, a lot more professional looking. So we had an informational meeting on 821. There will be more information to come to council uh, if we have to put new legislation in front of them to let them know uh, that we are going to switch how the water bills are being produced. Uh, Miami Valley Lighting, that is the company who provides our street lighting uh, here in town. Uh, the contract ends this year, so we have just started uh, renegotiating that contract. Um, they are requesting that we change out all our uh, light bulbs to LED light bulbs. Right now we got some mercury vapor bulbs, a mixture of some other non-LED type light fixtures that are kind of expensive to operate. Uh, what that means is that we have to pay for that. So they did put a proposal together. I will be discussing that with council um, probably around the time that we have the contract come up. And I will invite uh, Mr. Stallman from Miami Valley Lighting to be in attendance of that meeting. Uh, some more information will be come to that to that proposed LED changeout. Uh, but we definitely will have a new contract for our street lighting here in the next uh, two council meetings or so. Uh, senior level employee performance evaluations. Uh, those were conducted on 828 of 19 and also 829 of 18. Uh, we'll be meeting an executive session tonight with council to go over those employee evaluations. That is all I have for the city manager report. I would be happy to entertain any questions. Council, any questions or comments for the city manager? Thank you very much, Mr. Bridge. Mr. Mayor, I do have one question. Mr. Vice Mayor. <clears throat> kind of not with it tonight. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Bridge, can you explain to me why the new format's warranted? Um, the, the new what? The new water, floor, water bill format is warranted. Uh, we have, I've received quite a bit of complaints about people not getting them. They're easy to get lost in the mail. Um, the fact that anyone can just look at your card and see how much your bill is. It's not uh, encased in any type of en envelope. Um, so we are looking at ways to better serve our residents, uh, to be a little more discreet and professional forward thinking with those uh, water bills. Any costs uh, we don't have known on right. that yet? Uh, that, those will all be discussed at a later date. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, sir. Sure. And it's just a proposal. We don't know what we're doing it. We're just in the beginning looking at stages. Okay, with thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> All right, moving on to comments from the members of the public. If you have any questions or comments, please go to the podium. You can state your name and address and try to keep it to five minutes. If you have any questions or comments. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let's see, come, or, uh, committee reports, none tonight. Resolutions, none. Ordinances, zero for intro, three with action. Ms. Burner. Okay, we have ordinance 19-26, public hearing in action tonight. In ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds over $25,000 for the purpose of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio's annual audit of financial statements for the year ending December 31st, 2018, and authorizing the City Manager to enter into a contract for said audit with the <coughs> Auditor of the State of Ohio. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to accept Ordinance 1926. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance, this is actually a yearly ordinance that we do. Every year we have to get audited by the state of Ohio for our financial procedures. Uh, they come in, they look at various practices that we've done. Um, um, this amount is not to exceed 28536 Because of that dollar amount, it has to be put in front of council because it does exceed my amount to spend. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions or comments? <coughs> Ms. Garner. Right. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Accepted 7 0. Did you hear that? 7 7. seven. seven. Yes. yes. Don't That's get too excited. Oh, that's true. Let me take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it a few weeks. 
Go ahead, Ms. Byrne, when you're ready. Okay. Ordinance 19-27, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending and restating Ordinance 19-18, authorizing the adoption of the tax budget for the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, <coughs> for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020, and submitting same to the Auditor of Clark County, Ohio. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Move to accept Ordinance 1927. And an explanation of this ordinance. This has previously been discussed in some council meetings. Our tax budget is fine. We don't have to resubmit anything to the county or the state of Ohio. Uh, page 20 of that tax budget was done on an Excel sheet. One of the formulas did not get added to the total debt service fund, so we had to go back and re-add that in there, uh, which is why the legislation is in front of council tonight. Council? Questions or comments for Mr. Bridge? Ms. Berner? Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. <clears throat> and moving on to Ordinance 19 28, public hearing and action tonight an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of a new sheriff cruiser in conjunction with the Ohio Cooperative Purchasing Act. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Cobb. I'm going to make a motion that we table 1928 until after the election. Second. You want to go over the, I, I was just informed of, at the meeting I'd missed what you guys had went over, so I didn't know if you wanted to go in a, a discussion. Well, we need to see if the Police levy will pass rather than invest forty thousand dollars, and it doesn't pass. Sounds like a as Mr. Britt says, we still have time to order the vehicle, so we're not in trouble. Okay. So what we need to do is just sit back and table this, and then bring it up again after the election, and let's see what happens then. What day is the election on? November fifth. November fifth. November fifth. So we'll have. <clears throat> And this is what I asked. I think it's a very brilliant idea to do that. I commend you for thinking like that because I, I think it's the way to go. If we do that on, when's the, the election? The 5th? 5th. So on that November 18th, we could introduce it as an emergency, but I would need a sixth affirmative. We would have to bring it off the table at that point, sir. I'm sorry? We'd have to bring it off the table at that point. Okay. I don't or if, if this, if Mr. Cobb motioned to table it, I second it. If the vote fails on it, then uh, this ordinance fails. Sure. Probably if you want to do what you're doing, the best thing, in my opinion, if council agrees, is to let it die for lack of a motion, and then you can reintroduce it on the 18th as an emergency ordinance. Here but if we vote on this, you can't bring it back. Even if you table it, though? Yeah, we have to vote on to table it. Okay, so on November 18th, here's, here's my concern. I don't want to do a two read because we'll have to do one on the 18th, one on the first meeting in December, and then we'll have to wait the 15 day period to be effective. Now, what so, I'm saying, if, if this is tabled and we bring it back up on the 18th, I think you said, yes. we can go ahead and vote on it. It don't have to be done as an emergency. But I'm just saying for the, oh, will that count as a second read? Or do you have to start the process over with the first and turn to do a read? This, this, this is already the second read. We're just tabling it. Okay. So if we pull it off the table, we can vote on it, and it would be effective in 15 days. Okay. If that will work for okay. you. Okay. If not, I'll rescind my second. If Mr. Cobb rescinds his motion, we'll just let it die for a lock, and then you can do it as an emergency if you like. <laughs> I just didn't want to get into the whole waiting for it to become effective. Right, no. We, we, we had to start the process over again. I think if we introduce on the 18th, 15 days effective, that December 1, December 2, we can cut the check. I just want to cut the check in 19. Right, I'm because saying. because since since it's tabled, we don't have to reintroduce it or anything. It's already been introduced. It's had its first reading. It's currently got it on its second reading. We're just motioning, Mr. Cobb's just motioning to table this to a further date. And then once we bring it off the table, all we do is vote on it. Is he able to table it with, the, with it coming back on the 18th? Absolutely. There's no timeline. I mean, you can table it for 102 days or you can table it for the, a week. There's no timeline on tabling uh, any uh, legislation. Okay. I'm just saying, could he table it saying we're going to table it until November 18th? 
That way, I know when if he wanted to if he back. wanted to state it that way, he could. Okay. Would it just be easier to just let it die though? That's on no, you. because then we have to go through the first and second read. Okay. Yeah. Then then we're where he don't want to be. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, in my opinion, if Mr. <clears throat> Cobb agrees, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I will rescind my second. You redo your motion and add to bring this off the table on the 18th of November. I will second it, and then council will vote on it to table it and re revisit it on the 18th. That can be done. You follow me? But I've already. We can rescind our motions, and you can. Well, I understand and you that. Can but motion what I'm trying it again. to figure out here is, I've already given him permission to reintroduce it. We have he, he wants a date attached to it that we can pull <clears throat> it off the table. Right. He wants to be sure it comes off the table on November 18th. It's what Mr. Bridge is saying. I'll I'm sorry. No, no, like you're, you're fine. <laughs> Do you understand that? Right. Okay. So I'll send my second. You can amend your motion or, or to make it simpler, Mr. Mayor. Sure. I make a motion to amend Mr. Cobb's motion to bring this off the table on the 18th. Second it. Second. There we go. We vote on this. We vote on the amendment. Right. And then we vote on his first one. That'll make it a whole lot easier and less confusing, hopefully, for you. And you get what you want. But, but that gives me directive to bring it back on the 18th. Yes. That's what I need. Okay. You Mr. get what you want. He gets what he wants. Yeah. And hopefully, Ms. Burner, you we'll there? see what's happening. Yeah, I get it right. <laughs> 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 okay, so we are going to vote on your amendment of yes. changing the wording right to the 18th. Now, to the 18th. So table the ordinance and revisit on November 18th. Yes. Okay. I'm going to make a motion we go get drunk. Shh, no more motion. No, I don't drink anymore. <laughs> okay, so we're voting on that amendment of changing that wording. Um, Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Sham. Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. And Mr. Cobb? Yes. Okay. So the amendment is good. Now we vote on Here. tabling. The now order. we vote on Mr. Cobb's motion. Okay. Which is to table it. <laughs> okay. And you were the second, so Mayor Lauer. Yes. Mr. Sheen. Can you repeat this whole thing again? Nope. <laughs> Just <sit down>. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ms. Burner. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Ms. Eggleston. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lynch. Absolutely. That passes 7 to 0. All right. And moving on to something a little sim simpler, yeah. other business. Other business. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. The Crime Watch meeting will take place Wednesday, September 11th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. All right. Uh, before we drop down to executive session, I, I sent out an email to council and I spoke to Mr. Bridge about, it, about uh, trick or treat this year. Uh, it was kind of a popular topic when it got out when uh, the, sheriff, the sheriff had set the date for, I think it was Thursday, October 31st, which I think is neat to have it on actual uh, Halloween, but I know that doesn't work well with a lot of parents who may work late into the evening and the afternoon. So there was a lot of, a lot of conversation on social media, phone calls of the city building and into the sheriff's station. We can change trick or treat here in New Carlisle. We can change it anytime we want. Um, so. I know I'd gotten a little bit of feedback from some of the people on council. I just wanted to kind of go over it real quick and see if we can make a decision tonight. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Mayor, sir, I'll address it to you, Mr. Bruce. Yeah. You're talking two extra deputies, correct? I haven't really thought if I haven't given any kind of indication about the number yet. I haven't thought about it, to be honest with you. We were probably two to four. Okay, at the regular price. I, that'll be a discussion between me and the sergeant because sometimes we have to pay him a little bit more to get out here. I can't see going to the higher price. My thought is on that, Mr. Cobb, and, and I had thought about that. If we went with the original date that was set by the sheriff's office, I would have 
Now, I can't say that they're going to have, we can't say how many deputies they're going to put in New Carlisle for that night. They're not putting any additional deputies. They're going to put what we normally have. Exactly, exactly. That would be our responsibility. Right. But my thought is if we were to change it to the, the Saturday and we did have to spend money if we wanted to to put a couple extra deputies, you know, or most of the, not, I can't say most, but we've had a lot of feedback that citizens want it on that day. And I think if that's the day they want it on, they would probably be okay us using tax dollars to make it a safe time for them, is the way I see it. Um, it almost sounds like Halloween had been uh, on Halloween or the day before, whatever it was, but it's been on Saturday for years. Years. And for, I was a working mother. I got off work at five. I had to get home as fast as I could so I could feed the kids get them dressed, and did we, all the other Saturdays, did we hire extra deputies? I, it's been on, I don't know. I here, think here's my logic with the extra deputies. If no one else in Clark County changes there to the Saturday, we're probably gonna have an influx of people coming to town just mm -hmm. because we're getting dislocated. That's my logic of getting extra duty on. On a typical Saturday, we probably have double coverage, but it depends on when that double coverage is. It could be an AM shift and a PM shift, so I, I, I don't know how that schedule works out for that particular day. Um, that's the reasoning for having extra duty in here because of the, I think we're getting a lot of people coming in. And plus, it's a great opportunity to show people their tax dollars are at use. Right. We have this great event going on. What better way to have four or five deputies and recruiters going around town? Keeping your kids safe. Well, but the only thing I'm saying is we've been doing this for years and everybody else has been having their Halloween on Halloween for the majority. And we've always had the influx of the extra people because I always make sure I stay home and I pass out candy. And we get a lot of people. So I don't think this is gonna be any different if we do it unless, and if you wanna spend the extra tax dollars to ensure the safety of the children, I have no problem with that. I just wanna say I'd like it to stay on Saturday just from the working parent perspective. And you don't have to worry about what time they get in. It's, you still want them in at a regular time, but you don't have to worry about bedtime as much. Right. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bridge, I was thinking of him and was looking at you. Uh, will the uh, fire department be out also? Whatever night the word yeah, we we're talked running, about it, but I'm sure they'll be that'll and be standard. Yeah, and well, I, I know in the past they have, but if we change the date, is what I'm wondering. Actually, Saturday would be better for the department because I'd be able to have more personnel. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> would we also be? Uh, this could be a sticky question, I think. Would we be buying candy for these deputies to be handing out, or will the sheriff do that i i don't know how that works or if we've ever done it here, here i mean that's something we can i could talk about with the uh sheriff's deputies if we have to go and buy some candy to get them out and take, take it out of their own pockets i don't have a problem with this. okay thank you sir yes sir mr cobb do you have something else well i know the sheriff picks the date of trick or treat now we're going to have to come back every year if she changes this yeah, I mean, if you, if, you, if you don't like the date the sheriff set, yeah, you as a council can come and change the date. And once you change the date, and that's simple to me to do my administration of it, you know, as far as cops and all that stuff. But you can do whatever date you want. And I don't, I don't recall seeing anything in state law that says you have to follow the sheriff's recommended dates. Uh, but I think, I think if, you, if I could just pick, pick two to set, we have an opportunity here. We have a police levy coming up in November. It's a great opportunity to, to maybe move it to a Saturday to put that visibility there, have our cops going and giving out candy. What a better way to say to the public, this is your tax dollars of use. Right. You know, I fully support changing it to Saturday. If you, you know, I think it which benefits everybody. I'm looking <clears> at this as an opportunity, one, to provide complete public safety, a marketing opportunity to say, hey, this is your tax dollars at work. And three, hey, have it on Saturday, and it's a lot less stressful. Thursday nights are tough for people. That's what they have mm -hmm. the first place. Mr. Cotton. What I'm trying to get at here, can we take it and make a motion that it's done the Saturday before Halloween? Automatically. Take a boat and do it. 
<laughs> no, I, I, wouldn't, because, I wouldn't be a favor of that. We I don't have one favor of that. Because, I'm sorry. On no, go ahead. <laughs> is Halloween on a Thursday this year? Yeah. We, we have elections coming oh, up next year. Uh, the, uh, oh, no. We could have a new sheriff. No, no, sure. We may not have a new sheriff. I know, I believe Gene, uh, Sheriff Kelly, had it on the Saturday before, which I know I don't pay attention to because I don't have any kids. I do give candy out. Somebody says, oh, it's Halloween. The kids are coming. I go, okay, let me find the candy I bought, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, Ms. Hopkins about it, and I told her, I said, when I was a kid, we always did it on Baker's Night. You didn't want to do it on Halloween because the goblins was out there get you, you know? We always did it on Baker's Night. Uh, and there wasn't no time limit. You know, if there's a porch light on, you go knock on the door, you get whatever candy they got. Times has changed in the last few decades. <laughs> well, yes, few decades. And uh, the, uh, so I, I don't have a problem moving it to Saturday because there is a lot of working parents. You know, I, I didn't have a problem. I didn't have kids when, you know, back years ago to, to have to do anything with. So uh, I guess with that said, Mr. Mayor, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, I have the, the chief wants to say something. Let me get chief first, Mr. Cobb. <laughs> so you're thinking uh, on, on, on looking at, at which are, that's, that's when it, it's always the, it's always been the Saturday before. Which is the 26th this year. Chief? We're always pretty familiar with the deputy schedule because we work pretty much hand in hand. If it's on a Thursday night, you're only going to have one deputy, and that deputy doesn't come on until midnight. Mm -hmm. Wow. We're going to get extra duty anyway, probably for that event. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Deputy Allender days off our Wednesday and Thursday. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Cobb, did you have something else? Yes, I got a question. Tell me if I'm wrong or not. If we go ahead and do this, move this, change the date on Halloween, can we also put an ad in there that city buys the deputies candy to pass out also? The what, I'm sorry? That we city buys candy for the deputies to pass out also? Oh, I'll, I'll make that, I, I can do that on my own. I don't, you don't need that form of motion or anything. It, it would, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> it, it, I hate to just jump in, but it, it's under his preview of expenses that he can go and have somebody go buy candy for the deputies to hand out whatever what whatever he wants to buy. you know fifteen dollar candy bars or oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, i don't think we need a, a motion though to do it do we not to buy the candy i know i'm talking about the bait we do need a motion yes. to, and sure. a second okay. because we have to legally change it from what the sheriff dictated because the sheriff dictates Halloween throughout the entire county. And, I, and there's other cities, I think, that changes it right. because I don't like the, usually the day that they pass. One other thing I want to add when they're talking about the deputies passing out candy. The sheriff's, not sheriff's department, but the fire department passes out candy. And I know like uh, Dollar General takes donations of candy I've donated before mm -hmm. and people drop it off. Could they share? The only difference you're going to have here, we do it on the opposite night. They're coming in. From they're coming in. Yeah, they're going to come in from around other communities, yeah. other counties. But, but yeah, like I said, I think that's normal because they've been coming in from other counties because most people have it the night before Halloween. But I don't mind spending the money for the deputies. I just thought maybe there would be an abundance of candy. Council, any other questions on this or comments? I, I, I have one more question, sir. Then you can do what you want to do. Uh, since we have a new council member, mm -hmm. I'd like her opinion on this conversation. <laughs> since she laughed when I mentioned the decades ago. <laughs> Number seven? Number seven, yeah. Um, I, I, I agree. I think I, we should change it to the Saturday before, uh, okay. mostly for the working parents. Um, I, where I live, I don't. I haven't had trick or treaters in ever. Right. Okay. <laughs> Other than my grandkids, um, but uh, yeah, I think it, the Saturday before would be per perfect for the parents. And I kind of put a poll up on I Facebook saw. today, and yep. majority of the people. Mm -hmm. 
26th than the Thursday. All right. Sure. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tom. Uh -huh. Sir, I make a motion we change the date on trigger treatment and we hire the deputies we gotta have. Second. Who's the second? Me, ma'am. Vice Mayor. You got it. Okay. You can set the change date. What time are you gonna have it? It'll be six, six to eight. eight. Six oh, to eight. Same time, six to eight. Yeah. Okay. We, that probably should be in your motion. <laughs> <laughs> six to eight. So. Six to eight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Six, six a and then six p. I don't mean how do I get in there? I don't know. You sink or swim. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Chief. Yes. Ms. Hawkins. Yes. Ms. Eggleston. Yes. Mr. Cobb. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mayor well, since Mr. Cobb doesn't care, I guess I will be a no. Do you want? <laughs> since, since you don't care, I'll be a no. <laughs> yes. Yes. I agree okay. with it. That All right. Thank you. Oh, you got to vote. Oh, yeah, we voted. Yeah, I voted. All right. And moving down to the executive session uh, tonight to discuss the compensation of public employees. And there will be, as far as I know, no action taken after that meeting. So uh, with uh, unless anyone has any other discussion, we'll uh, move into executive session and Mr. take Mayor. Off. Mr. Lindsay. I move to uh, go into executive session for the discussion of compensation of public employees. Second. second. We have chiming in. Just take your pick. Dual, dual seconds. One in, one in first. Ms. Eggleston. Yes. I was first, wasn't I? Did you, did you say yes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Cobb. Yes. yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Ms. Hawkins. Yes. Motion accepted seven. All right, we'll take five.